Hello, my name is Janet George and the purpose of this video is to show doing a partial row at the top and bottom of your quilt with no jump stitches and also using the top left corner row placement. For this video, we'll be demonstrating using an edge to edge pantograph. The safest way to set your width is to use this yellow ruler at the top. You'll want to move your needle to the far left of, the, of your quilt top to whatever distance outside of the quilt edge that you're comfortable doing, whether it's a quarter inch or a half inch. So we're, we're just gonna say a half inch for, the, for this demo. So you would move your needle to the, to the far left, um, out, one half inch outside the left edge and move your needle there and then touch down there and then you would move your needle to the far right, um, a half inch outside the right edge of your quilt top, and then touch to the right in that little block down there, and then say apply measurement. So I'm gonna change this right now because I want it to say 50, and I want the height to be 10. Just those are easy numbers to work with. So, um, so now we're all set up and we need to select the pattern. So we're gonna select this pattern. We're in continuous line. We're gonna select the shamrocks, open them, and we'll add a few more. And I want them to connect. So I don't really like this because there's a, a, a gap there at the end. So I'm gonna choose this one. And now it's wrapping from the right and left sides. Um, we wanna save this pattern. As soon as, um, as soon as you get the pattern like you want it to quilt, then you need to save it. So come up here to your save icon. And if, if you don't already have a working folder set up, I, I recommend that. So um, this is just what I do, not saying you have to do that, but in Pantos, I would say, I wanna create a new folder and I'm gonna call it working. So W-R-O-R-K-I-N-G, okay. And then at this point, you would, you would um, type in your, um, we'll just say test. It's, it's, it's actually not gonna let me save because we're in demo mode, but you would type the name, you would say enter, and, um, and then you would hit save right here. But it's not gonna save because we're in demo mode. But that's just what I recommend doing because you'll need to come back to get that file and it will save all of your, um, all of your measurements there. Right now, we need to nudge this row up to be ready to quilt that first partial row. So we will have move and we'll start moving it up and I'm gonna change the distance it moves to be very small here. So this is what will work for a nice partial row. As you can see, it's wrapping vertically. To take that off, you, you unselect that little star right there. So now we're ready to go to the quilt screen. So we touch quilt and we go into optimize and we need to remove all the breaks. So we say remove all and no, we don't want to connect the starting and end point. And now we say, okay, cause we're ready to quilt. It's probably hard to see on the screen, but the green is where it's gonna begin and the, the red is where it will end. Now that we've got the design optimized, we need to tell QCT where is the top left corner. To do that, we can either touch settings along the top there or we can touch down here. Um, under placement method, right now block is selected. So you have certain fill method choices. So this won't work. We need to touch one point. And now we have the fill method of top left corner. So we wanna choose corner there and say, okay, um, at this point, you would move your machine needle one half inch to the left of the um, left edge of your quilt top and one half inch above the top or, or if really at the top, it's wherever you want your topmost stitches to be. If you want the stitches to, to stay right on the edge and not go off of your quilt top, it's, it's your choice but um, you, you want your, your needle to hit in that 
top left corner at, at a half an inch to the left because that's what you're going to maintain all the way down the um, the rest of the quilt and then just um, level across the top with wherever you want the top stitch to be and then when you get your needle in that point you want to touch down here and now at this point you are ready to pull bobbin and sew okay so we're gonna um, assume you've already done that and now we're ready to start the second row obviously you can't restitch this because we had shifted it up so you touch the red x and you're going to go back into this screen we're now back in the pantograph screen um, if you were working live on your tablet you would select pattern and you would go into that working folder and you would pull up your file but since we don't have that to pull up here i'm just going to hit reset and do redo our pattern really quick so now now we're we're back to what we need to quilt um, we need to know where do we want to start that second row based on how much nesting we want to do um, but we have a problem because here we we have one row so it's hard to see the nesting so here's what we're going to do we're going to add two rows even though we're really not going to be quilting it like this but we want to see where do we want it to nest so we'll go ahead and select alternate so we can move this second row up and and we're moving it to to where do we think it looks nice so there's not a obvious gutter between the two rows so this looks pretty good but it's still really hard to tell and we can go into options and we can show grid and we can do that um, but it's still hard to tell so up at the top there's a magnifying glass with a little plus on it so we're going to touch that and then i can move my finger along and it really makes it big so this is great so what you can do is take a little ruler, and if that helps, you may not even need to do that. But when you do that, you can see, well, when, when I get ready to stitch this, I would like for the top of that, that leaf to be level with the tip end of this leaf. So that's, that's what we're gonna base things on. So bring this back down um, and then X out. And then that takes you back to your screen. Um, I, I just want to show you something really quick. Um, the first time I did this, I forgot to reset it, and I went back, and, and I was like, oh, no, where did my good, good diagram go? So you can just go back into there and say fit. And that takes it back, and then take the X off. And now we're going to take, take it back to one row because we, we don't really want to do two rows at a time, and all of our measurements are restored. So now we're ready to quilt again. So we say quilt. And you now need to tell QCT where on the, um, where is that top left corner for your second row. So at this point, um, it's really hard to see on this screen. You know what, I'm gonna go into the optimized screen just so you can see it good. Um, so you would take, take a ruler and, and lay it so that it is even with with these two tips where we said we wanted this this top to be level with so you're gonna um, and go ahead and use two tips instead of one and you want to make sure that your ruler is even on the left edge with the left edge of your quilt because you don't you don't want to be tilting and so you'll lay your ruler here and then just make a mark over in your batting over there to the left and then move your needle to one half inch to the left edge and then on that mark that you just made and then that's where you will touch this again and say that um, that that's where you want your left edge to be and then you will use that method down the rest of your quilt um, if if the left edge of your quilt isn't really straight one thing you might try working uh working to see if it works for, doing to see if it works for you is just just take take your ruler and and do it a half inch outside of you of the left edge and just draw a mark straight down 
so that you always have that, that straight line to maintain going down. I hope that made sense. Um, but now let's pretend we're at the bottom and we need a partial row at the bottom. So what you're gonna do, I'm gonna um, go back into this screen. You'll see that the total height is 10. So right now, go ahead and measure 10 inches up from half an inch below the bottom edge of your quilt top. Because we're for this demo, we're gonna say that we're gonna go half an inch below the edge. Depending on how straight across your quilt um, your quilt bottom is, you may want to give yourself some more insurance and and um, quilt off more, or maybe you don't need to. We're we're just using an arbitrary half inch. So starting at half inch below the quilt edge on that left side, measure up ten inches and make a mark, and that will be where your uh, when you go into quilt that will be where you're gonna set your top left corner. So right now, you need to know, I'm gonna go back into the optimize screen since it's so easy. Right now, you need to know how much of your last um, row are you gonna need to quilt. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna measure from this tip, which is where you've been using as your measuring point all the way down. You're gonna measure from there to that half inch below. So for the sake of this demo, we're just gonna say five, cause that's an easy amount. So we're gonna say that from here to half an inch below the lower edge of your quilt top is five inches. So we need to go back into the pantograph screen. So we'll click an X. And so we need five inches worth of this design, but this time, it, uh, we're going to be shifting down instead of up like we did at the top. So you need to make sure that that little star isn't selected. And we're going to move it and nudge it down. So I'm going to make it move a little quicker here for us. Each of these squares is a one square inch. So I need this to hit at five inches. So I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five. So this is the line that I need for that top line of the design to hit. So I'm gonna change this to tiny since I'm almost there. I'm gonna nudge it up. So right now, I'm at the five inch line. So I'm gonna say quilt and optimize, remove all, no, okay. At this point, move your needle to where you had measured up from the bottom, the 10 inches, and made that mark. And then I would suggest doing trace. Um, with, with five inches, it's really easy to, to get exact, but it's usually not that way. It's usually two and five eighths or two and three eighths, um, and it can be a little trickier. So if that's the case, if when you trace, you see that, oh, I need it to be just a little higher, then click on that red X and nudge it up a little bit, go back into quilt and, and redo the optimize, remove all, uh, no, okay, until you have it exactly where you need. Something else I wanna show, just so I'm very clear, um, I'm going to select a pattern, only this time I'm going to use one that doesn't nest. Let's see, I thought that one. We'll say, we'll say that one. Let's see, we'll give it a few more. No, we don't want that. Okay, so this would be a design that we wouldn't nest. So at this point, to, to know where to start the second row after, after doing this, then I would just decide how, what is the distance that I want to, to start the next row. And, and I'm looking at whatever design, um, in this case, this one, and probably it would be whatever that measurement is, which it looks to be roughly an inch. So in my, on, on my quilt, then I would just lay this um, on my actual quilt top. I would lay this ruler on that and then just mark over in my margin there in the batting. I would mark that one inch down. 
Um, and then I would keep doing that all the rest of the way down. So I just wanted to point that out about an unnested design. I want to show you a design of if you're doing two rows. So we'll just go back and, and grab that again. Only this time we're going to do two rows. Um, I won't, uh, let's see, let's see. We'll do that and we'll nest that one a little bit. Um, so if, if this were the design, so it's now two rows, then um, for your beginning row, go ahead and, and take that star off and move it. Ah, need all selected. Um, so stagger that up and, and stitch that, quilt that, and then come back and, and do your safe pattern. And then when you get to the bottom, um, make sure all is selected and then you're able to move them all until however much of your design is needed. It, it could be that you only need part of that first row. That's fine. That second row is going to disappear. So that's how you do it if you are doing two rows at a time. Um, hope this video has been helpful.